Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Please Don't Sue Us special. My name is TJ, joined by Daniel Ikuta D D Ditos. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, and we D2? have... Yeah, sure. We have... Something like that. The, the VOD, the live stream from the Chinese broadcast. We're not going to show too much of that because that's its own broadcast thing, and we certainly don't own the rights to rebroadcast it, but we will be broadcasting the game when it goes live, and I believe we're starting off with the North America game, so that's pretty good, right? Yeah, absolutely. So the reason why we wanted to do this is because the Garena MSP, Malaysia, Singapore, Philippines, they don't do their broadcast until later this evening, if you're on Asian time, or just basically later on. And since there are no English broadcasts for this, we decided to do this for the community. Again, please don't sue us. We're just trying to provide a service. But our first match is Thailand versus North America. And it's extremely important for North America because we're halfway through the group stages and they need to catch up in order to get into the top eight so that they can go to the single, elim single elimination bracket. And if they don't make it to the single elimination bracket, then once they get to the Arena Vela World Cup, they will be the bottom four. And that means that they will be stuck in a group with two teams that are seated higher than them. They're facing off against Thailand, though, right? Yes, Thailand is the current number one team in the boot camp, having defeated well everyone they've played so far. They've won every they basically won every single set uh their the seedings so far are based on how many games that the teams have won uh north america unfortunately has only won two games i believe which means they only have two points whereas having won all of their matches having won two matches two games every single time thailand actually has 10 points um but we were talking earlier when we were on our podcast that perhaps some of the teams like taiwan and Korea or China, for instance, were kind of holding their cards back a little bit. Sure. It does look like we have a 20 minute break before that game happens, though. <laughs> we were not expecting this. Sorry, guys. For the... Sorry about that, guys. There's like a 20 minute. I can't. I can't. It's 20 minutes. On the mm. side. That's a lot Tw of minutes. 20 years resident sleeper. So, be back in a bit. Exactly. We'll be back in 20 minutes with North America versus Thailand in the AWC boot camp phase number one, which is the round robin group stage. Shaking at night, you got me sweating all over. Down the killing floor. Oh, I know everyone 
was talking, everybody told me so. No, I say, hold me in your pocket, beg you, baby, let me see. Sorrow suffer in your cheating ways. Hold my heart though within the bottom pitch of what the couple says. Talking, yeah, everybody tells me so. Shake me down, leave me with the pieces, beg and baby, let me go.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Please Don't Sue Us special. We start things off with Thailand versus North America. My name is TJ, joined by Daniel Dito's Aikuta. Perfect pronunciation of my name. Thanks, TJ. I nail everything I say, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I do know what you mean. <laughs> We are, of course, broadcasting the AWC boot camp from the Taiwanese stream? From the Taiwanese stream, they're playing in Thailand, I believe. It is also powered by Axe, we should say. Uh, no, we shouldn't, street. because this is sure as fuck not an official broadcast. See, like, I can say fuck. That's how you know it's not an official broadcast. Um, That's true. So, don't sue us, thanks, and also don't report <laughs> us to Tencent. Yeah, both of those things. Right. Into the draft! Thailand, over on the left, started things off. The ban phase has completed North America on the right. That's mostly Allegiance. You may notice one change. They brought in PYU in uh, exchange for Rocker, who, due to his military deployment, can no longer play with Allegiance. Pew is the top Korean jungler, or at least was last season, so that's an acceptable... Uh, roster swap, but it's definitely going to result in some changes to their team coordination. Yeah, definitely. And you see it in their results as they have won two games in, I believe, five matches so far, speaking of the North American team, which leaves them in second to last place, and they need to make up lots of ground. But let's take a look at this draft right now with the first pick, Arum, which is certainly interesting. And the way you counter that is with Marksman, but typically you want a standard marksman, not necessarily a joker, but North America is going for that joker. And kind of funny because we talk about Arum as the anti-Max, she's the anti-frontline comp, whereas Max is the anti-marksman, anti-backline comp, and they're picked on opposite sides. Yeah, kind of interesting to see the North American side going from Max into the Arum. It's already been established because we theorized Arm would be very, very good at shutting down a deep dive push. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, looks like they're. Are they trolling with the Skrek? I know. Uh... Grack is like a thing that's run in Thailand. I've seen this before. <clears throat> hmm. Well, interesting. I can't say that I've seen all the games because things have been hectic since we all got back from uh, Caster School slash E3, but looks like the Grack is locked in. And the funny thing that I, I actually have seen some is highlights with Grack Tulin? where... Double Mage Jungle Tulin? Uh, it could be Jungle Magunga as well. <laughs> if we're talking about a jungle <laughs> mage. Either of those uh... two things excites me. It looks right. like they're just pressing all the buttons, though, so I won't fairy craft too much. <laughs> Pew is like, well, who should I jungle with? I mean, he is one Get of the top junglers. Get out your D20! So he... <laughs> God, we landed on Cricknack. That was my dice rolling sound. I really wanted to see the Magongo jungle, which is what you I do didn't... is somehow you leash all of the monsters and you ult them all at once and kill them all <laughs> and you junk you just clear super fast but unfortunately we're not going to get that we are going to get Craig Knack, who isn't always chosen despite his buff recently and yeah i'm so excited to see how this grack plays off too what i was about to mention earlier uh was that i've seen some highlights where basically they use the grack as a way to counter things like you know flash and uh, even though they have Flash on the team, and things like Muret, because whenever wherever they go back to, whenever they return to their original location, Greg just goes, oh, there you go, I, I got you, and just completely, you know, anticipates the return and perfectly times it and everything, and then there's a dead Flash or Muret. So, yeah, I want to, I'm really interested to see how the Grack turns out because obviously his kits is pretty strong if used like perfectly, but that's typically not how it happens. Usually the other teams are able to dodge perfectly and you're left with a guy who can't really do much. I just put my shoulder on stream for a solid two seconds. I'd like you to know that. <laughs> All right, I, I'm here for you, TJ, whenever okay. you need a long... Over... My shoulder has been leaked. <laughs> We're Any into game. overly lengthy explanation. <laughs> Thailand on the left side. North America the right. The AWC battle for seeding. 
continues, of course. North America needs to win these games in order to qualify for the uh, single elimination bracket phase, else they're basically just locked into their round-robin results, which are not great. Oh. Rag immediately providing some value there, getting in the first blood right off the bat, and that means Thailand has the upper hand to just go and invade right away, and this is... That's the kind of pickoff that can immediately just lose the game for North America, not to be anticlimactic here, but that is huge. A massive early game pick, and Moss may be in trouble in response. He's caught out. KO will go in, and Pale's spent, though, and it missed. That's the major slow. The rest of the Thai team is here, and North America just needs to play back for now. Yeah, look at the lead here for Thailand already, 500 gold. Obviously, that doesn't sound like a lot, but in the early stages of the game, that can mean an extra item here and there and the positional advantage cannot be overstated either but uh, looks like we have the arum going into the dark slayer lane arum a lot of experimentation going on with her right now whether you want to invade like you do in solo queue or whether you want to put her in dark slayer lane whether you want to put her in the abyssal lane obviously they're going for about like a three-man kind of roam situation here with uh Ryoma and arum taking the solo lanes I really like what we're seeing from North America as far as how grouped they're staying around the Kricknack. They clearly want the Kricknack to be able to find value. Unfortunately, Thailand, after getting that opening pick, are just sitting tight. With the exception of this top lane push, Sleepy, mid lane, also finds some visitors, but nothing will be found on the major Devil's Chains that was just casted. So we're resetting to a neutral again. Absolutely. I, I think that sitting tight... Well, as we have a little bit of an engage here. The flash is coming in. Eh, doesn't get much done, but sitting tight... Oh, okay. Oh, he goes in with the Red Stallion and is annihilated. Oh. There's a Devil's Chain. Pew's pulled in as well. That's three kills to nothing, and it might be four. There's still pressure from that flash. Sleepy will lean round the corner, just trying to get a little bit of burst in. Maybe with the Thunderbird and the Max Ult, they can find revenge. There's one, but it's not enough. It's an even trade. MTS and Rest are still here, but this is a 2v3. They can't possibly hope to win this. Surely not, but MTS gets two. It's an instant Wait, trade again. Me marks. MTS? I think that's enough. MTS assumed that Grack was going to go down. He was so low, and he figured that his passive was just going to take off the damage from him, but he calculated incorrectly, and Grack gets away. So MTS basically just throws away a kill there by walking away a bit too soon. Wanted to do the whole, you know, cool guys don't look at explosions thing, but really burns them. That said, and they, they're, they're still in this. Yeah, they, they get three kills there. It's certainly not a clean fight, but it's certainly an acceptable one because they come out on top for a moment. P Pew, though, he pushes very far forward. Moss is still nearby. The Devil's Chain will be baited out successfully. Remix goes down to KO, and Sleepy's pushing in onto Moss as well. Those Thunderclaps doing big damage, and I think that's another successful invite. Yeah, absolutely. And you see Krignak, the strength of his crazy mobility, even though he doesn't have that great CC or survivability, he's, even though he's stuck between two times, as another great Devil's Chain is out and pulls KO. KO and... That's too KO far forward, even with the Conqueror. He's pulled in by the entrapment. I don't know if he can get out. No, he cannot. And, ah, uh, strongest... well, yeah. North America, the they strongest... don't get that tower? Oh, no, they did get the tower. That's yeah. an acceptable yeah, trade. Did. Yeah, it works out for them in that regard, and they're actually heading Whoa. on another- What- What are these hooks? This is Cyclone insane. pulls Sleepy back in, but he's got the HP. He's able to back off with some Ion Blasts. He did a good job in that situation. You know, when you can hit, hit every single hook with Greg, he's a good character. Let me just throw that out <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Greg is a very high skill cap character in that if you have good positioning and you land your Devil's Chains, then all of a sudden he's eight times better. Yeah, not to mention the fact that there's so many ways to lock down people, especially with the snare from Arum. That yeah. any anytime anyone comes near, it's like, oh, you're you're basically dead. Especially because if you look on the side of North America, there is no super tanky hero to last through that, or even chunk Arum to you know a third of her health if she decides to take someone more tanky. As it looks like, the is just gonna go down to the three man roam. North America doing a great job on that, but they've left KO out in the open. 
There is no tower member in the bot lane, so he can conceivably get away from this, but he's going to need to do Max some fancy in. maneuvering. The liftoff is coming through. World Devourer already cast, though. We'll find the kill for sure. There's the liftoff. Oh, he's oh, immediately oh. interrupted. The Arab <laughs> shoving down the trade attempt. <laughs> the and block. they body block the Thunderbird as well. That's insane from Moss. Perfect play from Thailand. Oh my goodness, the snare to hold off the max under the tower. And then as they get low, they block the Thunderbird as well. That was insane. That Cyclone goes wide though. He tries to flicker Cyclone onto Sleepy, misjudges his position in the bush. And now there might be an opportunity for a response. There's the Horn Rush dive. PYU doesn't quite have enough damage, and he's pulled in by that World Devour. There is the possibility for more trades, though, because that oh. Thunderbird finds an opening kill, and Sleepy's Thunderclaps are doing damage as well. KO in the front lines is working away at most. The Thunderbird oh. again blocked, though. Jerry earning his weight in gold right now, and he's caught the snare as well. This time it's enough to trade even one for one, but that's more than you'd expect. Arum incredibly powerful in this game. Right, you do see the downsides of Arum as well, though, because you want to lock down the hero, but in order to do so, you have to sacrifice yourself because you take the damage as well. You know, some other hero, perhaps an Ormer, obviously Ormer has his own weaknesses, but he could have just stunned the hero right there and they could have taken up the kill, but that's the downside of Snare, though. But you you see the power of Thailand as they, as they you know, push into the tower on the bot lane, but... They just work so well together as every single time, you know, a, a teammate's in trouble, Grack is there for the ult, and then they're blocking the Thunderbirds left and right. Obviously, that one did connect as they're a little bit off on the positioning there, but just great teamwork here from Thailand. I'm loving it. They look so good as a team, but North America, I think, is doing a very good job of choosing their fights. Here's the push for KO. He's been badly caught out, and he'll go down. The Cyclone's deployed to stop the interrupt, and they annihilate rest. Here comes MTS with his Bionic Blender. He and PYU might be able to pick off Cherry, and they do. There's the flash down as well, surely. And yet again, they find big value off of that max pick. Absolutely. The re-engage was huge there. And... In a way, is Max seeming like the counter to Arum? Because every time she decides to ult onto someone to snare them, she goes really down in health. And then Max can just re-ult onto her when she's blowing in health because, you know, you get the pick off, she runs away, and you're fine. But not if Max can just chase you down and pick up the reverse kill. I think the number one thing this Max MTS is adding to the roster right now is the passive static. Being able to shut right. down the regen seems so powerful in these fights yeah absolutely that's another counter here that's that's really big thing that you mentioned there this is a good pick off as well remix caught out sleepy doesn't need the thunderbird but he'll fire it off just for a fact very good map awareness by the north american side they're looking good in this game one yeah, I mean, look at this. Thailand looking so good, but, you know, North America ahead by a thousand gold almost. Just amazing how they've been so resilient here. But, you know, that's an extremely close game. The gold is pretty even, even on kills, and the towers are pretty even story as well. NA maybe slightly ahead there, but, uh, yeah, great matchup between the number one current seeded team and the num the second to last team. And it, it goes to show that uh, perhaps they're closer than we thought going into this. Yeah, the North American seeds, if they don't win this match, their seeding is going to be terrible in the World Cup. Yep. So it's really important to them that they win here, and I think we're seeing a bit of that. Certainly going to be the case, but looks like an invade coming on to Sherry. Is she going to Ooh. pop her ult? If she, oh, she does. So they can't really attack her right now, but good patience on the side of North America, waiting out the snare and getting the kill in the end. But Dark Slayer being taken here. Liftoff coming in. Nice attempt with the liftoff. Cyclone already deployed. We'll do a burst of damage. Remakes will pick it up for Thailand, but the rest of the fight doesn't go in their favor. MTS picks wow. up two. PYU gets another KO, and MTS will be able to grab Moss down to half his HP. There is only one player remaining right now on the Thai side, and that is insane for North America. They lose the Dark Slayer, but they gain four kills and at least two towers. I am loving the max here, max play here from North America. As the snare comes out, though, Lubu goes down. So big defense here from Thailand. Remember, going down from both sides, but uh, looks like Arm's going to go down as well. And just a bloodbath under this tower. Yeah, very well played there by Sleepy, keeping himself alive. Ooh, rest <laughs> has to run. 
So two towers is all I get. Right. But like I was going to mention earlier, the Max play is just absolutely amazing. And it goes to show how good he can be with Res Ooh. getting a return kill here. Pew's going to go down as well. So it looks like that was a two for one on the side of Thailand. And, you know, again, I keep belaboring this point, but you, you try to do sneaky things. You try to take the Dark Slayer, you know, when the other team isn't noticing, but Max is there to pick it up. But it uh, looks like despite that, it's just back and forth the entire game between Thailand and North America here. That was such a good little burst kill there by Rest, using the canned laughter to iframe major damage from the Lindis, and then being mm. able to follow through as well with his auto attack. Very clever play. Yeah, absolutely. Unfortunately, they take the lower end of that trait there, but uh, look, you know, Thailand, despite getting those two kills, they kind of just playing with taking the Abyssal Dragon, letting things reset. No real objectives up, so let's see how teams position going forward here we can't unfortunately look at their builds at the moment but um what Which do you think is the down here oh, on yeah, the bot line started. he's mm. isolated one v three make that four and he knows it you can yeah, see he's absolutely. uninterested in taking this fight tower falls but there's an immediate response north america are gathering up towards the top side of the map yeah, full recalls on the side of Thailand as they try to defend here. Max obviously has his global. It's not exactly like Xenio, though. It takes a while to get across. He might need to pop that if he wants to join the team fight. There's but they're the going to jump KO, on this tower. We'll dive in. That's nice push as they bait out Moss, but the World Devourer still lands. Pio goes down as well, and KO's already fallen. Sleepy will desperately attempt to get out of the ultimate, but cannot in time. And it is disastrous for North America. Wow, MTS says, I am not going to join that fight. I'd rather stay behind and be the only surviving member left, as that was an ill-advised dive there from the side of North America. Obviously, part of it was a little bit of a bait by Thailand as they were able to get off Grax's ultimate there and pull them in, but um, yeah, not the best decision-making from NA. Can they recover from this? The push. Tower again picked off. But MTS and the rest just need to play back for now. MTS is going to get pulled forward whether he wants to or not. Death Flurry, Devil's Chains, he is gone. Great play again here from Moss on the Grack. Just completely shutting down the opponent with that ultimate. Somehow, you you know, in the lower ELO games, you don't see the Grack hitting so many members with the ult. But just incredible timing, incredible anticipation of his opponent. And really just a t running a tutorial, running a lesson how to play Grack at the highest of levels. Don't call it a boot camp for nothing. <laughs> North America. <laughs> teaching any lesson. Yeah, getting schooled. Well, they're still in it. Uh, no Dark Slayer up, so no real objectives to be taken here on the side of Thailand. If we do take a look at these builds here, uh, interesting on the side of Tulin, no, nothing like the Aegis on his side. Let's pick up the Arctic Orb for a little bit of the Endure action. And uh, pretty standard stuff from all members. You have that Brawling style from Max. Uh, the Joker with the Omni Arms coming in. Doesn't have, or it has the Ring Breaker. Looks like he's going for, I think that's a Muramasa next. So probably going into the Fenrir's Tooth afterward. Typically you see that as the fourth item from Joker. And uh, are we seeing any Arum counters here none yet we don't see any curse of death or tomb of the reaper so that is something to look forward to as she could be problematic if you don't shut down that healing Rats unless they're just the relying on the, the max team need to hold this tower well i don't think they can devil's chains pulls rest back in he's gone wow. again moss finding massive value on that crack they've got another tower too i don't know max if they're gonna push this Look at Max, he's pushing bot right now. Several oh, members yes. going to be recalling back. Are they going to be able to stop them? If they can stop them from going back, Max might get this tower, but it looks like Look Arum at Look at the play. Pew was intentionally wow. basic. He wanted to interrupt the recalls. That was exactly what he did, but they lose everything in the process. This is now a base wow. race because it's an empty base for Thailand, and MTS needs to win this 1v1 and hard push, I think. He'll opt to split the difference, just back off for now, and indeed lure a few Thai players towards him. Cherry says, don't mind me. I'll quite happily well, play the distance because... MTS wanted to lift off back, except you saw that it was interrupted there by Sherry mm -hmm. with her snare. So she's like, no, you're not going anywhere. And now it's just up to a rest and the, the rest of the NA team, if they can spawn quickly enough to hold this off. Looks like Ty 
is Thailand is not going to push the issue, and we still have Max and Arm <laughs> just kind of going at it. <laughs> this is the stupidest fight because MTS is so much less HP, but Sherry like doesn't do damage. So... Well, looks like she's doing enough damage as it <laughs> yeah, is. Yeah, but I like mean... over the course of ten minutes, Daniel. There's the left top. Not in time. <laughs> Peel, in the meantime, well though, picked as... up Remix, which means this Dark Slayer attempt will come through. And the Devil's Chains did land. Rest again pulled in. This time, Moss doesn't have the follow-up. Dark Slayer isn't properly attempted. Ooh. There's the deep dive from BYU, but he doesn't find value. That's two players down as KO falls as well. Massive damage coming through from this late-game Lindus. Yeah, you really see the teamwork of Thailand working over North America here. Just like it's there, the coordination isn't there. You see players going in one at a time and just dying. And while NA was extremely resilient earlier on in the game, they're really just showing their holes as Thailand is working much better as a team, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, that's certainly the way it looks. North America gave it a good run in the mid game. Now, though, they're up against the wall. Yeah, and you see Arm, she has built that amulet of longevity. Look at the amount of HP she has. 1,800 from Leviathan, 1,200 from the Mail of Pain, 1,200, excuse me, 1,000 from the Orb of, uh, uh, Medallion of Troy, excuse me. And then I believe it's like 1,700 plus 10% times all of your HP on the amulet of longevity. She has so much HP. Like, look at the bars. Look at her health <laughs> bars. Yeah. Are, and she's a, basically a centipede. <laughs> It's like millipede arm right there, as Pew looks what? like he might be what? going down once P more. What? Why are you there, PYU? Why is the rest of your team following? Sleepy goes down, Devil's Chains lands, KO's down as well. What just happened, North America? You're better than that. That was a complete collapse of coordination. Just, just desperation, you know? They're like, well, we're behind, what can we get done? And against a Dark Slayer buffed team not out much. in the open, not under tires, yeah. MTS did fall, rest. The last one here will just have to watch as the North American core crumbles and game one of this best of three does go to Thailand. Yeah, I was actually really impressed with North America in the beginning to middle stages of that game. It was honestly mind-blowing how they were staying ahead and even taking the lead, even though Thailand was so impressive in their own play. I guess it was like, Thailand looks so great, and yet North America was keeping up, so that made me so impressed with North America. It was just an amazing match in the beginning, but unfortunately, Thailand kept their level of play up while North America fell apart at the end. Definitely, the coordination within team fights seems to have suffered. That was always one of the things we felt the North American teams weren't great at. Here's the stats mm. screen. Um... Yeah, RM, 26% damage taken. It's pretty standard. <laughs> you take so much damage as her. I actually had a game where I took 62% damage playing as RM. That's typically what you can find from her. But uh, yeah, like we mentioned multiple times, the coordination not quite there for North America as you know, perhaps not used to playing with a player as aggressive as Pew. Though that said, Rocker was an aggressive player himself, typically uh... diving pretty far with his Morin. The thing I noticed the most was in the item builds. Um, Thailand, like you, we can see now, Thailand has much more specialized item builds. Mm. Whereas I feel like North America it doesn't quite realize the impact of their items to the same degree the Thai and many of the Asian teams do. Right, yeah, much more just typical items across the board. Um, you see a lot of the teams, especially in Taiwan, um, I'm not sure if Thailand has copied their meta or if they just are ahead of the meta or what, whatever the case is, but typically they go for more defensive builds, as you saw the Lindus go for the Frostcape there. On the Yoma, you saw the, both the Medallion of Troy and the Frostcape, so you know, a couple of extreme defensive items there. And yeah, it certainly worked out for them because they just seemed extremely hard to kill, especially for someone focused on bursting down as quickly as possible as that Crickneck is. Well, game number two coming up around the corner. What needs to change? Well, honestly, the only way that North America is going to win is to just play as immaculately as they did in the first half of that game for the entire game. 
because Thailand looks scary. Like I was just getting nerd chills all over my body as they were completely that blocking one... everything perfectly. That one sequence was yeah, I the my line, mind was blown. The bot yeah. line where they like got screwed three times and somehow did the only three actions that could have evaded all of the damage. Exactly. Zero deaths somehow in the situation. With, like, they get dove upon by Max, they immediately snare, the first member gets away, and then Arum gets extremely low because she's under her own tower. Then the Tulin comes in with a Thunderbird, tries to finish her off, the perfect block with... And maybe that's why you pick Grek, because he's just really fat and can block Thunderbirds? <laughs> That hitbox, That's though. That's why people always picked me in dodgeball. <laughs> we'll be right back. Game number two between Thailand and North America. Don't go far. Welcome back to the Totally Unofficial. Please don't sue us. Valor Series Boot Camp, Garena, Live, Rika. My name's TJ. And I'm D2. That was good. I was wondering, I just kind of left it, and I was wondering what you'd do with it. And then you like... <laughs> Jumped in there. Yeah, he saved it. Well done. The bands are beginning for game number two before, between Thailand and North America. Thailand, of course, on the left side. Up 1-0. I like the consistency, even from the losing team. I hate it when a team just overreacts and says, oh, this player was, or this hero was really good. Let's ban them. And then they just get completely off their game. And you saw that when teams played against Allegiance, against the North American team at the Valor series, they just like, oh, we should ban the Morin because Rocker was so good with him. But you see on the bands, like the last bands in picture on the bottom of the screen, which is really helpful the exact same bands so far, which goes to show that they're they're confident in their strategy as far as the band pick base goes. 
Can we talk about how the logo for North America is a giant eagle wearing a top hat? <laughs> not, not, not any top hat either, right? <laughs> it's a star-spangled top hat. Can we talk about how much that needs to continue to the World Cup? <laughs> I agree. I agree. I 100%. Not only is that eagle ready to bring you some freedom, but you look at his face, he is fabulous, and he fucking knows it. Uh, I like the Thailand elephant, too. That's pretty badass. That, that elephant is stoned, my man. <laughs> <laughs> that elephant that is on another level of reality. Oh, man. Well, uh, the draft okay, has begun. So... Thailand's I assume those aren't lock-ins. If they are, I think maybe they're feeling a bit confident after game one. Maybe trying some stuff out. They're not exactly guaranteed to be in the top four as far as seeding is concerned for the single elimination tournament, but they do lock in the Scud, and Scud is a, I would say, an underrated hero. And In order to be underrated, they have to be good. <clears throat> they're a rated hero that's considered average. Right, but the reason you why people don't play him is because think they think he's, he's better not good. than average. No, no, no. I think he's better than people rate him, which they think he's oh. bad. Okay. Well, let's talk right. about the Toonlin, which has been locked in as a priority pick <clears throat> every single game so far by the North American side. That's very much an a meta. Do you think Toonlin is widely considered to be the best mage? I would say so, especially because of the advantage that you gain early and you know, the, the fact that you can snowball it. People talk about how he falls off late game, but doesn't fall that much, I would say. And I was going to ask you, like, the beginning of this draft was exactly the same. Do you think NA is just that confident in their draft, or do you think they're kind of just resigned to losing and they're going to practice their strategy? I think it's probably a combination of both. Uh, this is a really good draft, right? This yeah. is a solid draft. If they were, if they like twice had locked in some stuff that obviously had mistakes, then I'd be like, I don't know. But they've locked in a good draft twice, and if they continue to draft like this, I'm fine with it. So if you're able to consistently get the same draft and the same decent draft, why not do exactly that? Because this is a boot camp. This is about training. Yeah, the exact same bands and picks here from North America over on Thailand side. Looks like they switched out Gilma for Scott. And the Flash for Liliana. Liliana. Were you so Liliana. upset that there was a Liliana that you just hit something? No, my, my lamp fell. That's what Liliana! Dum. <laughs> I'm liking the Scud pick over Dioma, even though Dioma is like better in every tier list, including ours. Uh, shameless plug. But it's he just wasn't really... SGAOV.com for the hot link to the Samurai Gamers Arena of Valor. Sorry, continue. <laughs> exactly. But uh, Dioma just isn't very attainable on his own. He can, you know, brawl pretty well. He can duel pretty well. But... Um, he can't really get in the thick of things as far as team fights go, as we have a little bit of a hiccup on the screen. But um, Scud is very, very uh, resilient. His passive allows him to heal constantly, basically, as long as he's auto-attacking. And the Scud combo, as we get into the game, and uh, I'll let you take that away. I'll explain that in a second. We are on to it. Game number one, which, or game number two. <laughs> One Apologies. game up for time. You shouldn't have, you just like threw it to me. And I was like, oh, ha! Ah. And I like caught it, <laughs> fumbled it a bit, dropped it to the ground. North America opens things up, diving into the jungle. Both teams do, running right past each other, ships in the night. <laughs> I think NA did that intentionally because it wasn't the typical way that you run past something but oh okay the crack scared me for a second there. the crack probably scares the americans as well because moss has been landing some hit <clears throat> sick hooks they've isolated sleepy and they've guaranteed he's on his own so they're just trying to see what they can find towards the mid lane and maybe even pressure up top here as well this might go lums up for grabs 
And little things like that where you get the opposing team uh, well, this is good. low in health makes things seems like the situation much better. PYU does get the golem. Oh my god, though, that blinding wow. light is devastating. First blood picked up with the aid of that Liliana. Exactly, the uncage coming out from the R room as well. And that's just a great ability from her. Even though she's a tank, she has long range abilities like uncage, like her auto attack, which is range as well. So really helps pick up those kills and kind of makes her a nice hybrid character, even though she is so tanky in her own right. But this is what I was mentioning earlier. Sleepy so low, can't even contest. And you just get advantage after advantage if you're Tylen. Look at the gold lead, just because Sleepy can't even do anything. PYU and the jungles can get pressured out as well. Rest <clears throat> and Pew kind of need to scrape something back. Sleepy's nearby. This is a good fight if they can win it. Moss is the focus early on. Not sure how I feel about that because Remix comes in from the side and oh! makes this fight very dangerous. That is an insane Liliana build. Two kills are quickly converted. How is he doing that much damage? That was a beautiful shining and blinding light just over the wall. That's just a phoenix so tier. Nice. He's not got anything yeah. crazy. It's just skill. Just <laughs> just too much skill. And they're going to take the Abyssal. They're already up 1.7 gold. I mean, on top of that, they killed the Joker and he uses Flicker. That is win-win, win-win-win, if I've ever seen one. That was, it was perfect. <laughs> and he gives oh, Rest a little bit of PTSD there. Uh, North America, you need to be picking up these objectives. It's the only way back into the game. Yeah, me Marks is just eating Sleepy's lunch right now. And Sleepy is one of the best players in the world. Moss, uh, good world mm, devour. And now snare? the Lindis comes through again. The Devil's Chains finds a kill. Pew has no HP already. Rest is down. Sleepy... We'll fire off a Thunderbird, oh. and MTS tries to follow it through. They will be able to successfully pick up the Lindis, but I think MTS is hard committed to a losing fight, and he will go down. Surely. Maybe. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually one of the best things about Greg. Whenever someone's running away, that's the time to hit a hook, because they have to run in the straight line. It's very hard to know when they're going to throw up that hook so that you can juke it. But I think that's still a good trade for MTS because they are low on gold and you do get extra bounties if they, their team has lots of kills. So works out for them. But uh, we see this duel in the bot lane and look at this remix holding his own against Alubu. All right, well done by him. My character we don't see much play of. Moss will oh. not quite land the Devil's Chain, but even when he misses, that man's on point. Just the fear he puts into NA is insane. And look at this Pew's like in his own jungle running away. He's... Do you blame yeah. him? <laughs> There's a big scary Grack man nearby. A scud working away on the tower. And the jungle is a camp, but not for his team. It's just bizarre world because usually Greg is like this character that you just make fun of because he can't do anything. But Moss is completely rewriting that narrative about him because Lubu does get away from the three men gang in the bottom. And me marks. Let's see if he can't hold this off right here. Asian Grax <laughs> are an entirely different breed from what I run into. I know. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. But uh, I want to talk about me marks as well. He's absolutely bonkers on the Liliana so far. But oh, Mark, Moss is in a lot of trouble, but he's got the world devour. It doesn't matter. Oh. Thunderbird comes through, but me marks is here, oh and God. there's two. Nicely done. Rest has been tagged down by the snare in the meantime. Cherry secures three for the team. Me marks, I think, getting credit for the triple, at the very least, the double. And you see the team fight break. Oh, wow. Okay. Good night, KO. <laughs> you see the team fight break out, and MTS didn't even go in with his liftoff, despite the fact that it could have made a huge difference. He's like, nah, I don't want any part of that. Look at this gold lead. 5,000 already at five minutes? 1,000 gold lead per minute. That's, uh, that's Thailand for you. I'm just... I, I, that one combo where me marks came out of the bush, Fox Leap <laughs> just murdered some fools. I felt like I was watching something illicit. Do you think that was a misclick or mispress by Moss there going for his ult? Or do you think it was just trying to another one of his um, anticipation thinking they were going to jump him? I think it was, yeah, the latter. There was a Lubu nearby. If you can catch him out early, <clears throat> things are good. 
Look at this invade by Thailand, just all up in NA's business. KO. Is down bottom what? there, and KO's just trying to zone, keep control of the tower, but you can see it's not working. Because the rotate is instant. Thailand want the mid lane tower, and they'll get it. Here's the push for more. Rest oh. will go down. Me Mark picks him up easily. Sleepy tries to get a response, but you can see he does not nope. physically do enough damage, and he's chained down by the snare as well. MTS comes through with KO. They should be able to pick up one, surely, but Me Marks, he flickers away. MTS is pulled back in for a second time, and there's Pew joining the fray as well. Moss again on a killing spree, and Thailand up 13 to 3. This strangely reminds me of the Golden State Warriors in a way. Not that they're what? not just the fact that they're really good. It's the organized chaos. Everything seems so insane, like all this stuff is happening, but they're able to just completely play as a team while everything <laughs> is happening and completely play for each other. Cherry just got tagged down by the Thunderbird. He's got like two HP, sees the Thunderbird coming and just stops moving. <laughs> He's like, whatever. No. We've got enough of a lead. I'm not worried. No, I think he uses his snare actually. So if you use your snare, you basically replicate the damage. So it's like, well, I'm going to die. I put some damage onto them while I'm going to die here. So the snare kind of looks funny because you can be totally separated from the person if they like blink away right when you use it. And so it looks like you're standing there, but you're actually just like, you can look at this, you can see the chains on both sides. So yeah, he did use that snare and I believe it did the damage onto uh, Pew for a second there. Or excuse me, Sleepy. I do have, I do have weak eyes, so... No, it's hard to see. I played lots of arms, so that's the only thing to tell. Sleepy and North America will get the Draken. Small consolation, though, because I believe there's a Dark Slayer take ongoing at this moment. And the Americans mm. are so busy in the bottom lane that they haven't yet noticed. They may get a tower. Me Mark says, all right, fine, you can have that. He'll return to the fight in a moment with the Slayer buff. And oh no, Man. it is devastating. Wow. Rest will find a nice laughing gas, what? but that's it. What? That's it. They just... Two before them. Two it, before they got They three have kills. such a level advantage. It like doesn't matter. <laughs> oh my goodness. The confidence from Thailand and just the knowledge, I suppose. Like, yeah, they're just, you know, getting the calculators out. Like, hmm, two before, but we have this exact advantage. And we also have the Dark Slayer buff. That should be a win for us. And that looks like a win for Thailand right here. MTS will hard commit. World devours there, though. And there you have it. Thailand has taken game two, a swift 2 0 set over North America. Impressive stuff. Thailand looks so good there, just so scary. And it was just the team play. You know, obviously we had the crazy hooks from Moss, but that game, he actually was missing a lot of them, as far as I could tell. Mm -hmm. And again, it didn't matter because he just used his big body to get in the way and block a lot of the shots from them. And they just completely played around each other, knew exactly when to disengage, knew exactly when to you know, peel for their allies to put in the damage to kill the opponent and just extremely impressive play. And look at that, me marks 38.6% damage, just unbelievable. <laughs> it's an insane amount of damage from a player who was insane all game long. And crucially, he found more damage in Fox form than I'm used to seeing Liliana's do. Yeah, once you get ahead in gold and experience, you really can just start throwing your weight around because once you get into that fox form, you get eighty, you get an additional eighty armor and magic damage, and in addition, in the first two and a half seconds, you gain extra depending on what level you are. So you can get up to three hundred ish armor and magic defense, and you know, typically she's pretty fragile even with that, so you don't want to go in fox form all the time. But they were so far ahead that she was like, eh, "It's getting in there. I'm a fighter. I'm a brawler now." Look at me. I'm a melee champion now. Don't mind it. <laughs> 18 to 4 is not a scoreline I mind either. Very well done. Almost 30% of the teams of the Thai team's damage coming from Cherry, who had an excellent game over there on the brand new uh, Aram. And I'm happy to see that. Yeah, Aram played really well. Great coordination with, the teammate, with her team, excuse me, and 
that's another thing that's so impressive to pick up a hero like that and not only play extremely well with the hero, but for the entire team to play perfectly around her. And you saw how confident they were. They probably were just practicing her all day, all night, because first pick Aram, they knew exactly what they're doing before. I want to highlight on the North American side, it obviously didn't go well for them, but uh, Sleepy, KO, MCS, all did decently. Pew, the new addition to their roster, and I believe, I could be very wrong here, but I believe they are working through a language barrier, mm. and I definitely don't want to prescribe my own opinions on their play, but uh, it didn't go well wasn't nearly as clean as when they had Rocker on the team. There it are looks, many moments... It looks like a team that's not having good communication with their jungler. That's what it looks exactly. like. Exactly. And that was one of the biggest things about Allegiance. Yeah, they had great individual play, they had mechanics, but one the ways that they were able to dominate the North American region was exactly the same way you saw Thailand play this game. Just great team play playing around each other. And when one member kind of goes off on their own like that, it worked for a little bit in game one as he was picking up kills, but immediately fell off the rails and completely was ineffective in game number two. And uh, you just gotta be, you gotta be synergized. You gotta be together and have all things moving as one piece. I thought there was another step to that, but okay. Oh, we'll be back <laughs> in a moment. Oh, it's a home friendly. That's our, that's our next match. Nice. Do you want to? Do you know anything about these teams? Uh, so Taiwan, the so it's TB, so Chinese Taipei. Uh, Taiwan versus Taiwan Wildcard. So <clears throat> Taiwan is J team, and J team crushed SMG, and SMG was the team that won the AIC. So SMG was one of the teams, or the team, excuse me, that all the Western teams looked up to. They're like, oh, what was SMG doing? What's you know Hanzo and Genji doing? The the players in SMG. And they wanted to copy them. They're kind of the meta setters, and J Team just crushed them in the playoffs. And they're rightly the Taiwan representative, one of the best teams in the world. And the wild card is a fan selected team, and they are pretty good in their own right. They're in the top half of the standings. So this is going to be a good one and possibly a grudge match because a lot of the players on the wild card team were in the GCS in which the J Team won. So going to be a fun one. Uh, briefly, somebody in the chat asked, what are the current standings? I can do that for you. There you go. Um, the current standings, Thailand at number one. The two Taiwan teams, Taiwan uh, that we're about to see, Thailand is sitting at number, or Taiwan is sitting at number two, and Taiwan's World Cup team. World Cup, God. In my defense, that is the logical acronym. WC, uh, wild card <laughs> team is sitting at number four. The North American side we just saw drop. They're number nine. My 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 man. It's tied with Pain Gaming from South America. Yeah. And uh that's uh that's uh rough. That's great. <laughs> that's that's a hard one. Especially because like the Europeans are doing quite well. North America came into it as an expected favourite. It's a bad sign, to say the least. They almost certainly will not make the top eight single elimination tournament. So yeah. they um, that means they almost certainly will be the bottom four and will have to compete with a team in the middle four and a team in the top four once they get to group stages. So once again, the World Cup. I feel the need to clarify this. This tournament does not decide any eliminations. All it decides is where you're placed in the groups in the World Cup. Um, but it's not it's not a elimination tournament. It, it's not an actual World Cup game. It's just a friendly tournament or sort of friendly tournament being played to both get all the teams some practice, uh, play together on LAN, and get the teams ready and seated for the World Cup with an idea of where they are against each other. Yeah, and in the process, completely demoralize the lower ranking teams and show them that they're not worthy. <laughs> That's dark we'll be right back <laughs> please don't sue us the unofficial broadcast resumes with taiwan versus t t taiwan after this
Talking, everybody told me so. No, I say, hold me in your pocket, beg you, baby, let me stay. Sorrow suffer in your cheating ways. Whoa, whoa. Hold my heart though within the bottom pinch of what the couple says. Talking, everybody tells me so. Shake me down, leave me with the pieces, beg and beg to let me go. Ladies and other people of all genders. My name's TJ. Welcome back to the unofficial AOP bootcamp stream. I'm joined by J J J Daniel Dito's Ikuta. I I Ikuta. 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 Yeah. It's hard because there's an I, but... Even Douglas somehow had trouble with that. What do you mean, somehow? The man is a second language English speaker. No, no, but you would... Particularly in Spanish and Portuguese and... Or actually, not Portuguese, but a lot of languages like that, whenever you see an I, it turns into E, like... Italia, or something like that. <laughs> I want you to do a really shit Mario voice for the entirety of this cast. Uh, I, just, I would just collapse over and die if they did that, but eh, that's why we're not doing it. We're anyway. into game. Left side is Chinese Taipei's team, J team. Right side is Chinese Taipei's wildcard team, a fan voted roster. So, fun fact, uh, Hanzo and Genji, mm -hmm. members of Team SMG, were voted to be on the team on the right side, but one of them couldn't attend the World Cup for personal reasons, and Holy the other shit. didn't want to go by himself. Look at, okay, so we were trying to work out the wildcard team's <clears throat> logo. So mm. the one on the right is flexing? The one on... No, the one on the left is flexing. The one on the right has, like, his arms flexing behind his head. You know the, the pose where people, like, interlace their fingers behind his head? That's what he's doing. Do you see it? This is, I see it, but this is, like, a... It's very vaguely there with the yellow, right? This is, like, a weird Rorschach test. <laughs> I, don't, I think it's just supposed to be the portrait. I think you're just seeing arms in the yellow background. Just... By the way... First pick Arum again. Mm hmm A very powerful character, clearly, and rated much higher. Like, I knew she'd be viable. I knew she'd be someone that people were chasing. Not this viable, though. Yeah, first pick three straight games in a row by the very, very top teams in the world. Now, that said, they also are extremely good with Grack. It could be a situation where you can only really use her 
at this level if you're extremely competent with her, or at least, you know, to a certain extent. Uh, but perhaps at lower levels, she's only good and not unstoppable. We'll have to see. The That's team, the team going through yeah. the drafting phase is kind of interesting. Yeah, the differences between the last ban phase that we saw was that Wonder Woman was banned and Flash and Max are banned. So letting Superman through, letting Teamy through, which allows either both teams to pick up those characters. Cool, yeah. The Superman will get locked in as well. And there is no dedicated counter as of yet over on the wildcard team. There's the Omen. Maybe. Yeah, you the Omen got you through the You expect well, an so. Omen or somebody with a lot of mobility uh, and slows to chase down the Superman. We have no CC of any kind as of yet, and they're going double mage? Oh, God. All right, no, it's just an Omen. Right. Right, and <laughs> they go for the obvious pick of shutting down the Superman with the Omen. And I'm really interested about this game because we're seeing several heroes that we typically don't see in a game, that being Teamy, Superman, and obviously we have the extremely strong Arum and uh, Liliana populating this game. So just overpoweredness on all sides here. The Oromar coming through is the support pick popular in the region. The mage over on the non-wildcard Chinese Taipei side will be uh, the fabulous Tulan. And we have a Crexy? Probably going to be another switch off. Of I would one, be but, uh, so happy if it was double mage with a Crexy. That would be a terrible pick, honestly. I would be so the... happy. <laughs> if you look they don't at call the it the series. wild card team for nothing. Oh my god. If you look at the at J team, the the normal Taiwan team, they have a really strong dive comp with an arm Omar that with a bear Lulu, is with a two. So buff. Yeah, he is ready to dive you. <laughs> that bear is ready to mess me up. So it is the Lindus in the end. Mm -hmm. and... Lindus comes through. This is and I do like the Lindus pick because Lindus. I think has played very well outside of the Western regions at a level that we don't see in our area. The one thing missing from the wildcard team, and this makes sense given that they're like just a disparate group of members from lots of teams, is that there really isn't much of a theme to their team comp, but just a bunch of really strong characters. You have the Omen to counter the Superman, but they don't really complement each other all that well. They're just kind of good, generally speaking. Whereas on the side of Taiwan, on the side of J-Team, I guess we'll just call them J-Team to be easier. They have a very obvious you know, strategy, a very obvious synergy within their team. They're going to dive you and they're going to kill you. We'll see. The... Type A side, I predict to win, just based off of that draft. It's a very good draft. It's everything you'd want. Yep, I would agree. That said, Timmy, as we have a pause, Timmy is one of the highest win rate characters in all leagues, everywhere. That looks like I have some issues. Are we on? Are we synced, by the way? Should be. Well, they bit head. Okay. Well, do you want to well, do you want to do the time cut thing? Oh, wait, we can't. There's uh, no numbers on this. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> I'm at zero no zero numbers. on the live feed. What are you at? <laughs> zero zero as well. <laughs> uh, I'll reset my feed to max, and we'll see what happens. Okay, I'm gonna reset it to live as well. Is Oromar's new skin going to be a bear suit? I assume so. That would, if I had to make a choice, it would be that. Talk to me, TJ. Uh, no. Arena of Valor. Is that your real name? <laughs> yes. I'm pretty sure that is the official account. It is, I think. Is it really? It is. I think, yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Please don't sue us! Thanks! We're oh, the game started. 
Benny's dying. Oh yeah, if we got right into it, Benny will be absolutely burned down. He's successfully able to disengage, but it's a very rough start for the uh, Chinese Taipei side. Neil still on the invade here as... Or no, that's defense. The colors are different. Still defending the jungle. The invade's coming through from Wins and Benny, who are both playing very aggressive on the tankier characters. And they will, it looks like, be able to successfully pick up the golem. That just goes to show how strong Arum is, because they were all low, speaking of the Taiwan, speaking of the J team side. And Arum just walks up in there and says, I'm here, I'm Arum, you guys can just back up now. And the wildcard team said, okay, you win. And that was that. The wildcard team definitely suffering for their early mistakes. You'd think after they burned Benny down solo, they'd be able to make a whole bunch of progress. Oh! <laughs> My <laughs> god! There. I'm a bit behind <laughs> you, I can tell, because that was that devastating. Wins finds a huge burst of damage. All it takes is one uncaged. Sets loose oh. the beasts of war. And they cut the wave okay. as well. Alright, I slowed down a few seconds, so hopefully we're a little bit closer now. But that was insane. Typically, you need snare to kill people under towers. But Wind is like, nah, good. <laughs> just, just, I just see my one and my two, and you're dead. And speaking of which, they're already under the tower. Look at the and zone just... from that uncaged. When we're trying to work out how Arum would fit into the meta, and the zone that that gives you, it's kind of insane. Because yeah. you basically just have to retreat infinitely whenever it comes in. Yeah, absolutely. And I've had a lot of experience with that. You run up to people, and if they don't respect your ult, you kill them. And if they do respect your ult, you take the tower. It's very, very oppressive, speaking of there's snare. And not to mention, you can use her second ability, Uncaged, before snare, and you will replenish your beast, obviously. But what that does also is there's three massive circles that the opponent has to evade, and then you get all the space as well. So both her, both Uncaged, her second ability, and snare, they give her so much room to operate under towers. Banny will be in trouble here again, but he's so oh no, not successfully oh. able to disengage. Huolin dives in. Wow. We'll be able to find the opening kill with the Foxtrot, and they've got the Reiki oh. shot as well for big damage. Star will find the return, though there's one, two, three kills picked up in the blink of an eye. Two of them in favor of the Taipei site, the wild card roster. Having trouble, but successfully able to answer earlier in the fight. Just the cojones on both of these teams are like, yeah, I'll just take the Reiki shot because I know I'll turn on you and kill you on the backside. That was so ridiculous. I was wondering what they were doing just running into that, but turned out okay. And both of these teams just playing in chaos so well. But at the end of the day, you know, the Taiwan side, the J team side, they do have a pretty significant gold lead, though Wildcard starting to invade and take it right back. Wildcard wanting their way back into the game with this pressure towards the bot lane. Benny will be caught out. Nice pooty poot stun. And they've got the follow-up. WC finding the last laugh using that long-range Joker rocket to pick up the kill. Yeah, it looks like an invade here from the Tulin as well. Trying to get on to the uh, Liliana, but yeah, like you mentioned, the, the team he has the original dive, right? You go in there, you dive, and if you die, you don't actually die because of being a bro. So, you know, both sides have their ways of diving under towers from their main tank slash support character. Mm -hmm. And it's been super impressive every time we have seen a tower dive from either of these rosters, because they're both so good at it. They're both so coordinated. And I really do enjoy getting to watch that. Yeah, absolutely. And one thing we talked about ooh, as uh, they go in trying to get on this bottom side tower, but the side of Taiwan, the side of J-Team, is so beefy. And that's why they went for the Arum. Because once you pick up the Arum, you can, that gives you the ability to build the rest of your team as that heavy frontline team and really just take it to the side of the wildcard team and the wildcard team yeah they go for the lindus to counter in a way the uh the our room but when you go for oh, that that dark. means that yeah absolutely joker they, gets out of there they could have gotten two there two towers in the top lane uh and there was a counter invade attempt by wildcard they tried to push top lane in the split push and they don't get that tower at least not yet the omen's still currently working on it 
Chinese Taipei side just occupying the jungle. Oh. The resurrection is there. Being a pro did get that Joker. He's back with most of his HP, and they burned down Neil in the front lines. Wow. So, okay, big thing to, to pick up here to mention is that Snare on our room will override the being a bro from teamy if you get it on teamy normally even if you're stunned as teamy you can use being a bro but not if you're snared and the same goes for any cc cleansing effects like you know Kilgroth or chognar but if another teammate dies then you can cleanse it so look for arum to try to get the snare on the teamy so that teamy can't get being a bro off Huolin needs to back off in the jungle for a moment as this superman's causing trouble <laughs> oh my god, so a lot shot. of trouble, but Zan Yo has more damage than he can possibly hope to deal with. Lindis apparently a Superman counter. Mid lane though, Chinese Taipei do take down a tower. And this allows them to find a little bit more progress across the map. That is a big thing that you do bring up though, because look at the site. You know, I maybe underestimated the draft from the wildcard team. But if you look at their side, they all have slows or stuns, which is very good against Superman. And that's usually one of the most oppressive heroes in the game. So perhaps that was the theme that they were looking for, trying to shut down the Superman. And in the meantime, Ooh. as they take down the Tulin, Maybe. potentially... He might. I think he's got the lightning strikes. There's one. He can't get the second off. And now the being a bro resurrection is active, but they base it out. They read it very well. The Chinese Taipei side get one more kill in this exchange. Zan Yo and the Lindis... We'll have the return. You can see those spirits coming out and chipping away at Benny. Even a well-placed entrapment will allow the pressure to continue coming through despite the kill they lost. Yeah, beautiful play there from Taiwan. Being able to wait out the being the bro and Ooh, just... wins. He, ooh. he gets this kill because he's got the pick a card. He could have dove instead, though. He opts to play safe. Nicely done by WC11. No interest in hard pushing. Just play it safe, get the tower, back off. Yeah, you, he didn't know where the rest of mm -hmm. Taiwan team was. They were rotating from the left side, and if you go too deep and don't pick up the kill and give up your own life, then obviously it's a huge deal. But look at the gold lead that the wildcard team has managed to pick up here. And going back to my earlier point, two marksmen to counter the R room, and on top of that, multiple slows to counter the Superman. And if you're slowing down, or excuse me, if you're countering both the R room and the Superman, what else do you have if you're a Taiwan team? Not much. You can see the lead is going to be uh, pushed here as Benny and Star just try and slip back. But the wildcard team are just trying to leverage what has been complete control, it feels like, for much of the game in all of the team fights. Now here comes the Superman Ooh. using will come through. Kryptonian strength. Thunderbird will be intercepted. The being a pro resurrection is spent and badly. Neil should find the opening kill here and does star in the meantime is chained by the death embrace. This wildcard team just needs to get out of here and there is no oh. way to do so with Yuzon <laughs> on the Superman pushing them back time and time again. A double kill again for Chinese Taipei and they trade three for one in the fight. Did I say that they were shutting down the R room and the Superman? I, I would like to read that at this point. <laughs> that was just disgusting. The Superman popping his ultimate, getting in there, causing so much havoc. He says, okay, not no one can hold me down right now. I am Superman. And then also the stare coming up for the R room, just really finishing off that team fight for the Taiwan side. And they catch up a little bit in this game. Beautifully done. I know... I, th I don't think you could ask for a better team fight. That was just, they, they found such a staggered engagement onto the Chinese Taipei side. It was, like, perfect. They got every single fight they wanted in the order they wanted without ever having to take a proper 5v5. Yeah, absolutely. That's probably the way to go about it. I'm actually very interested to see how, like, full 5v5 teammates go forward. Uh, obviously, all members are equipped to kind of deal with those team fights except for the omen who you know typically you want to have that numbers advantage or just be one-on-one -on -one. but uh this is a really back and forth game so far and pretty interesting because typically the taiwan side the j team side has been dominant in their own region so, it's, so to see them kind of struggle and to be fair this is you know the all-stars of the remaining teams on the wildcard side so interesting to see this matchup be so close so even
It is, I mean, it is a regional matchup. Oftentimes, those are a bit more interesting because within the region, Ooh. they know each other. Sanyo does find a death embrace. Neil, half HP. Benny, though, is doing big damage with his standing tool. The Resurrection, I don't think, caught the player in question, but they have the Chain Lance anyway. That's a lot of pressure. Neil and Star both very low, but they've got the return from Wins, who takes the lead on what should be a tank, a support character, and does not care, opening things up again for Star. And Shani Chinese Taipei takes the fight in dominant fashion towards the second half. Despite a struggle in the early phase, they should get this tower. Yeah, you have to really be careful about that. That's some pick up. Same thing. Oh, wow! What? Oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> Neil <laughs> might have more. He does. Good return, Zanya will again, like... though, nuke down wins. Look at how much HP wins has, and look at how much it almost doesn't matter. Zanya weaving through the bush, oh. using that speed boost from Lindis, successfully jukes the pressure, and now disembrace <laughs> means Neil should go down. Zanya gets the push in the top lane, a carry on Lindis. That is insane. Okay, Zanya should just sign up for the NFL right now. Those jukes. <laughs> ridiculous just in back and forth finally getting her prey and picking up the rm kill that was so ridiculous and the burst damage to completely annihilate star that two out of nowhere just don't go near bushes because john is gonna kill you i like i uh i don't know what to say that was insane i don't think i've ever seen such good mechanics from a lindis it's all right, though, because there's the return. Star successfully picks up one. This will be traded, though. The wildcard team pressur pressuring the bottom lane. Lu Yao takes the front line with the Dead's Embrace, and they're just going to try and back out for now. It, it almost feels like John Yo has such good mechanics that he could attack faster. Like, he just clicks the attack button quicker, but Yuzon is in trouble. Yuzon goes down first. Benny with the standing tool, though, might be able to turn this around. The Peking Bro Resurrection catches one, maybe two. Definitely one. Yes, there's the second. The Death's Embrace will not be up in time, though. So Lu Yao goes down, wins. Under pressure again from the Star Lindis player. They try and pressure through, and I think Neil has the kill. Successfully chaining him down with the aid of wins. Thunderbird will barely find the kill for Star. And there's the fight back in favor of Taipei. Just on a razor's edge, these fights are. Zhang Yo able to get yet another kill right before she dies. You know, just, just standing right up there in the front line saying, you know what, I've lived this, but I can kill you before I die, so you best watch out. And, uh, you know, I, I was able to get the upper hand in that fight, but just the Linda Sun of Zhang Yo is so terrifying. Let's take a look at her build. She has the Soul Raver, so constant you know, cooldowns on all of her abilities, the Rank Breaker and the Muramasa for massive armor reduction, and uh, the Frosties, or excuse me, the Frost Cape as well. So every single ability that she pumps out of there, which she gets on extremely low cooldowns, by the way, is going to be slowing them. It is a three-second cooldown, but just constantly slowing her opponent. And it looks like she's possibly going for the Fenris Tooth as her last item. So tons of damage and slow here from the Lindus as team in trouble. A lot of trouble. Benny finding good pressure there. But he's going to be able to, or going to have to fall back, rather, as I think they're a little bit scared of this Lindus. Use on. was almost taking the 1-1-v-1 one, one of one the game. He cannot win. <laughs> the Omen scaring him in the bot lane. But here's a Dark Slayer attempt. Half HP on it. This is going to force the fight. And there's the Superman right on it. Zanyo, will it be a bro resurrection? This Joker is down to the Kryptonian oh. strength in the top lane. Neil, very low. But two kills already in favor of the Chinese Taipei side. And I think that might be three. Hua Lin has nothing to get away from Yuzon with. Yuzon knows this. He's trying to circumnavigate. There's the unpredictable. He should still go down. But he... Barely able to make it out. In the meantime, there's a split push. This omen just hard committing to the bottom lane tower dive, and I think he'll get it. He does. Yeah, snare unfortunately not up there for our. But uh, yeah, using his flicker and his untouchable, try to get out of here. Look, let's see if he gets it up once more. His tower is a bit far away, so they're gonna go ahead and let him go. And wildcard, they know that. The that they're on the Dark Slayer, so they scare them off. But what an insane fight that was. I thought that the Being a Bro was going to help them out. A lot of times you don't see the damage from Being a Bro come out and actually make a difference, but it made a pretty huge difference there. Unable to pick up the kills, though. 
to take a look at these builds once more. Looking at the Arum this time, going for the Leviathan into the Mail of Pain, pretty standard there. The Shield Lost is just for the stats. The passive on it actually only works within 200 units, and that means you can't even use your beast because you're too close. Uh, going for the standard, the standard Gaia standard as the fifth item, which is great because you're stacking HP and you get the health benefits off of that, the 8%, which goes to 10%, by the way, if she goes into the Amulet of Longevity, which is her last item, it appears, as she has the Grease of Protection right now. But both teams seem to be just sharking around at the moment. Still playing for the Dark Slayer. The wild card team forced to kind of hover back here because they have a disadvantage, but look at this split push in the bot lane. They're going to have to deal with super minions very soon. Even if this Dark Slayer buff is picked up, which it looks like it will be, it's going to be close. Oh my I god, NT, that's a bit more than you can chew. He's got the Resurrection, but they know it. So the Resurrection is brief. In the meantime, the split lane pressure has shifted to the mid lane. Lu Yao perhaps just trying to focus the tower, but I don't think he can. <laughs> Use on, despite being disembraced, gets back into flight mode and makes things very dangerous indeed. Yeah, I think that 2v2, you know, the tower and Superman versus the, old, the tower side of that one. Not the best engage if you are uh, the wildcard team, but I just, I don't know about the tactics here from the wildcard team. No. The Omen split pushing bot that wasn't going to win in the game, and they just gave the Dark Slayer for free. I see Taiwan no, coming in aggressing no the snare. This push either the snare comes through. That's the tower at half HP. Winds down very low as well, but they don't have an immediate response. That's the power of Arum. You get in there, you use your snare, you kill them, you get out. Now you have an advantage. Mid lane tower at half HP. Of course, the tower lead still in favor of the wild card side, but the slayer buff hasn't faded yet, so I certainly wouldn't count my chickens until they've hatched. Here's the push for the bot lane. Seconds. These minions. Ten seconds left. Will be picked up. Mid lane is the pressure. NC has respawned by this point, and there's the death oh. back and death embrace. Come on to star. He's vulnerable, and the dive will come through. Lun Yao is in the front lines. The being a bro resurrection does get to, oh. and the wild card roster holds on. Wins will be back thanks to his ancestral glory, but Hua Lin doesn't care taking the front lines. Use on maybe danger though. That's big damage found, and I think he has the resources necessary to chase down other members of this team, but no interest. Four for zero for the wildcard team. That just goes to show the power of Vega Road. They get Dovapod, but it doesn't matter because you can't, you have to commit if you're the side of Taiwan. You have to keep up those kills while you have them. You can't just jump out of there and wait three seconds for the Vega Road to come off that's a build that's, uh, cool. you know, affected this. And do they get the win game here? Good. It's all on the they Superman. Yuzon needs to make this that happen, and he cannot. Game number one. Goes to the wild card team from Chinese Taipei. Wow, I was not expecting that. That is just great recognition on the side of the wild card team. They said, "Well, we have five v one. We don't need minions. Everyone has full health. They just go in. Superman can't take them all out." That that game was absolutely insane. Just complete back and forth the entire time, and you know, Taiwan just lost it there, diving under a tower. And the funny thing is, usually you see Teamy get banned. So these situations don't come up quite as often. Obviously, you saw Taiwan deal with the Teamy very effectively throughout the game, playing around the Bing and Bro, either waiting until the effectiveness wore off or just killing him right away and then going for the rekill. But it completely demolished them at the end there because they had to go for the kill. They took the extra damage from Resurrection there. They're still taking damage from the tower. And they got absolutely white. And it was brutal to watch. Use on. And the rest of the... I mean, so, uh, the problem is, even though those last few fights, and it felt like at various times the wildcard team was in complete control, the problem is, there were so many fights where it wasn't that perfect fair fight, and the main Chinese Taipei team just rolled them over. It was in many ways exactly the opposite game, than I anticipated because during full 5v5 coordinated fights, the wildcard roster assembled as an all star team looked better. Mm. And it was yeah, only those uncoordinated, messy fights where J Team 
the full organized roster seem to be able to pull ahead. Yeah, and this just goes to show how sometimes unusual it is or uncomfortable it is perhaps to use heroes that are typically banned. Like you saw the Superman, he works well in chaos where he's just pushing people around, hitting them all over the place. But that also makes it difficult to land skill shots and play more as a team if you're on the side of Taiwan. And like you mentioned, the scattered team fights, it was, you know, the Taiwanese team doing a lot better because Superman just pushing people around like a pinball machine. But on the other side, when Linus was able to do her damage, when she was able to, you know, get protected and do all that, and especially when they were grouped up together and NT, the unsung hero of that game, on point with every single being a bro, when he's able to get double resurrection every single time, that is huge for them. And again, the complete difference by the end of the game. I was looking at the damage taken, he took nearly as much damage as Arum, and that is insane. Arum typically like doubles the amount of damage taken as uh, of anyone in the rest of the game. And Team took that much. He took 30% of his team damage, even though he's kind of like one of those heroes where, yes, you take a lot of damage, but, you know, because you're the support, but he's kind of like one of those guys who kind of gets in and out, kind of a brawly, uses the stun. You don't take that much damage for his team, and for him to take that much, and soak that much and have the being a bro completely perfectly every single time. I think NT was the reason why, you know, other than the Lindis play that won in the game for the wildcard team. Yeah, it was super cool to see. But remember, that's only game one of potentially three between these two teams from Chinese Taipei, and I cannot wait. We'll be right back with game number two in the completely unofficial non Tencent or Karina affiliated broadcast to the AWC World Cup boot camp. Don't go far when we return. It's game two after this.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the unofficial, uh, uh, unofficially unofficial broadcast of the Arena Valor Bootcamp. My name is still TJ, still joined by the marvellous Ditos. Maybe my name. Maybe. It is now. It's game number two between the wildcard team and the official team from Chinese Taipei. Game number one went the way of the wildcard roster. Game number two, well, we'll have to see. We're into the draft. What do you make of it so far? Already, you can see that Superman pick uh, has not made it through for game two. Yeah, the Superman ban was actually in response to the Omen ban on the side of Taiwan. So kind of a backwards ban there, in a way. Just trying to get those out of the way. Like, okay, no Superman shenanigans and no Omen shenanigans. Otherwise, the bands were pretty similar. That does leave, that does let Alice and Max through to the pick stage. But once again, our room, first pick. All right, I'm just eating because it's like midnight and I'm starting <laughs> to get hungry. And because this is an unofficial broadcast, I can just eat. <laughs> It's gotten to that time. So, Teamy comes through again. Uh, interesting to see the teams here. Speaking of Taiwan and Thai Thailand earlier, completely prioritizing our room over everything else. And that includes Teamy, who was mostly an auto ban earlier on. And not only that, they let him through, he wins the game. I think that he was more impactful than the Omen in the last game. But what do I know? They're letting him through once more. And likely to see NT on that once more as we go forward. Uh, Doma here for <clears throat> the side of the wildcard team. And picking up that Joker as well. Joker, really popular, it seems like, among these teams. But uh, a lot of the same kind of picks we've seen so far. Over on the side of Taiwan, same old, same old with the Arum, Lubu, and Tulin. And let's see how they switch it up here going forward. Uh, they might go for the Omar once more to round out their dive comp, but they obviously don't have the Superman to pick up from. And no surprise, Liliana picked up here as well. So, uh, Lindis would be interesting. Very all in comp. Um, a lot less beefy front line, but they do have the Alice to kind of back that up. And they, yeah, they do not go for the Omar, they go for the Alice instead. And I like this pick because. You kind of just were able to protect your Lindus and give her a bit more utility by allowing her to have more, uh, you know, you give her the friendship, the shield, the speed, and she can get in there without having to, like, specifically, you know, CC your opponents. So the Alice, I think, was very intentionally picked at the final stage. Uh, Alice is very effective, especially in this region. And I think the fact that they were able to grab her at the last moment was very, very carefully designed because this final pick that's taking so long, they're trying to figure out what they're picking in response to the Alice. Right. I don't think they were expecting Lindus Alice to be the last two picks mm -hmm. here. And ooh, and... it's a Max, which is a great pick versus Alice. Yeah, Max can get to the back line. Uh, speaking of the, well, Tulin's kind of the back line, but the, the Lindus as well, the Alice kind of. Um, Lindus is a bit more immune to the Max because she can just run away extremely fast to her towers Zoom. and her team, and the Alice can shield her from that damage a bit. So, eh, I, I like the Max pick. It's reasonable. It's partially a counter against the Aru. Because of the fact, like you mentioned earlier on this broadcast, that you can mitigate the healing that she receives. But um, it's just an overall solid pick. I don't think it's going to be completely game-changing, but um, it's reasonable. I oh, know. I was going to make this joke, but then I didn't want to make this joke, but now I'm going to make this joke anyway. This caster lady is, like, the only person who's ever pulled off Opal's haircut. Mm. We were talking about that in the break. Yeah. <laughs> Like, <laughs> that's Opal's haircut, but successful, you know? Yeah, it looks good. It looks good. Just say. Her co caster's cute, too. We're into game, though. <laughs> it's game number two of this best of three set. 
the Chinese Taipei's wild card team took game number one. Now they're playing potentially to upset uh, who I believe the number two seed is right now, the official yep. Taipei side. Yep, they came into this into today, excuse me, with the second most points tied for China. So yeah, this is. Let me look at the standings really quick while we get into this game. Oh, the... here's the pressure right off the bat. NT Ooh. and the Pooty Poots trying to find value. Not able to do so yet, but he's got the rest of his team with him, so they're just looking for an early invade. Grab the Sage Golem, and that's exactly what the wild card team is able to do. That is a devastating start, provided the counter invade isn't fully successful. And thus far it is, even landing a free Alice stun onto 11. Yeah, or I'm even going for the Punish here, just to make that invade even more effective so that she can just pick that up right away because of the fact that arm is extremely good at invading the enemy uh just to get back to those standings it is eight points versus nine points so these teams oh. only separate by one as oof that uncaged Careful bouncing in finding the stun on the very last tick and neil just so close to getting that kill if he has his spirits i think he finds it mg yeah, max getting low here mm -hmm. so pushing off the use on wow looks like 11 is going to this go is a good down. dive there's the uncage. That'll find the kill. NC just needs to hold the tower. Two more levels. Here's the being a bro resurrection. As is right now, they lose the first blood. The wild card roster suddenly behind. Yeah, the uncage from our room is really interesting because it goes 50% slow, then 90% slow, and then stun. So if you get hit by the second charge of that, you are most likely going to get stunned on the back end if you're trying to run away. I guess it just basically stuns you with the second one. So yeah, if you get hit by that, or just if you, if you're playing against Arum, do not get hit by the second wave because you're likely going to be hit by the third, and it actually does a lot of damage. It's like a Venn diagram of pain. NT <laughs> will be caught out here. He finds the stun though with the Pooty Poots. They were trying to go for that combo with the Chain Lance, and unfortunately, it doesn't go their way. Yeah, not at all. I I'm really interested to see how this in this game because she doesn't have anyone in particular to pick on like she had in the previous game when these had the wildcard team was picking on the Arum and the Superman in particular. But uh, she's gonna have to be just solid in general and really rely on an Alice to get in and out of these team fights and lay out her damage. Bot line is going to go for the uh, Mister Stabby here. I love that name, by the way. <laughs> it is the best item name. Uh, bot lane, though, I like this pressure. The type oh. side just wants to gain enough control, but NT's here with the stuns. Dead. There's the snare. First kill will be found. 11 is down. The hissy fit as well prevents retreat. Watch this lift off coming in, though. If it's committed to, it will be very no. risky indeed, and it's cancelled just outside the dragon pen. MG sees the dragon is taken and opts to back off. I'm curious if MG decided to do that just so he could rotate over to the bottom lane and pick up the wave and protect the tower. It could have been his intention because I don't think he's going to get much done there. Or perhaps it was like a panic ult and you might as well just give him a little scare. I think but, it was um, probably casted when he still had allies to help in the bot lane, but it absolutely yeah. is a good rotate because he's able to get to the bot lane, push the minion wave, keep their tower up. Not, not a bad call at all. Right, but that is classic play from Arm. Getting into the tower, using to slow them, getting the air off and just killing them. Oh my god. And... Spectral R, wow. Thunderbird, there's the res. He's back. Surely. Maybe it was his second too late. I think it was. He was either too late or not quite within range, I believe. But uh, dive under the tower. MG <laughs> will go down. <laughs> Neil. Again, finding absurd damage. There's a blinding light to slow down his progress through the jungle, but it's not enough. Looks like they're going to pick up this Spirit Sentinel right quick here. And 2.7k gold on the Lindus already. So, Taiwan team really making this Lindus pick work. They're up a lot of gold, and really a lot of that is in that Lindus, which is what you want to see, because when Lindus has that gold lead, he just runs circles around the opponent and just completely chunks people down. 
Uh, another one you want to look at is the Aurum. She is building that Leviathan. Wants to get those stacks, wants to get that health onto it. Oh, this as is she good. gets the snare off. Nice snare, just to slow down the fight. Give Neil time to get in. <clears throat> Neil, oh Ooh. my god, almost <laughs> saves wins. But they decide to cancel the effort as the liftoff is baited. Yeah, coming in from the top lane, MG kind of pops it. It signifies it both, I think, crucially gives closer, cl cl total map vision and allows uh, the bot lane players to know that there's trouble headed their way. Breaks up the fight. Yeah, eyeballs all over the side. Wow. Ooh, it looks like Thunderbird to go will down. connect. <laughs> Nicely done by Star. Can we talk about the animation on that Thunderbird? That was coming from the entire screen, and you could really see the bird of, or was it like, it was like a projectile? Yeah. <laughs> the animation of that is beautiful on this skin, but, um, Every yeah, single on that eyeballs... skin is beautiful. Exactly. I was like pushing the top lane, but the eyeballs are everywhere. I just want to point that out. The max, you know, her, her one, I believe. <laughs> Use on. Eyeballs all over He's the winning this. Use on just dove a 1v3 and won it. He's got one res already triggered. MG will now hard commit. Yuzon's got them as well. Star just needs to back off for now and recommit with the rest of the team. And they do successfully. Neil will find one in response, but that's not nearly enough. Great rotation here from Taiwan. And just go, wow, Dark Slayer already. Six I like minutes. it. Okay. Chinese Taipei right. picks up so much control in the top lane. They go for the tower, but you only need the Lubu to do it, and then you just pick up the Dark Slayer as well. I love how they knew exactly how many members it took to take the Dark Slayer. They, Tulin just walks off towards the mid and starts pushing that lane while the Alice and take it by themselves. They're like, yeah, we can do this. We know exactly how much health, how much power the Dark Slayer has. And yeah, super early Dark Slayer, and they're going to start pushing these lanes. They're not wrong as to how much control they need. Okay, it looks like a setup here into the bushes, but <laughs> Wins gives it away because he can't hide in bushes. The beasts, they just show themselves. They, they, they're really flashy. Doesn't matter, though. <laughs> they still have the tower, uncontested. Surely, maybe, Benny needs to wait for the minion wave. They still find enough damage on the tower. It can be picked up in a moment. Use on in the top lane. Maybe in trouble. There's the Wailing Blade Spectral R combo. He's half HP, but still committing to this fight and still giving it a really good oh. run. You can see that static is maybe the only reason he loses that fight. Benny now joins, but I think this is an overextension for an Alice. I think that he was waiting for his team, but they got uh, a little bit sidetracked on the way there, <laughs> trying to take some towers. Uh, he held up for a long time. It was admirable, to say the least. But while that was going on, several towers go down, only four remaining on the side of the wildcard team. And so it was now eight towers to four, with a roughly 7k gold lead for Taiwan. They are well in control of this, as Shanio looks like he's extremely low. He's going to go ahead and just suicide himself that the other team doesn't get the gold uh, you know, prize for that. Interesting. Not a tactic we at all see on the North American side of things. <laughs> never die, never surrender. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just not something I've ever seen in the West. It's the first time I've... And it makes sense as to why you do it. I've just never seen it before. Yeah. The other thing that plays into that as well is his death timer isn't that long right now. He's already coming up at the moment, and his team is already behind their tower, so they can't really get anything done on the map. There's real use in in distracting the other team because they just have the map already so all things considered i don't know if all that calculation went on in his head but it certainly made it make all the more sense wins will push snare. in the uncaged and the snare nicely done mg is able to disengage with about half his hp but star on the side of the fight does devastating damage that resurrection will come through nt successfully able to back off using his ultimate but decent tower damage found and in the meantime, the top lane's pressured the entire while. Yeah, Timmy is still level 8, which means that his the cooldown on being a bro is extremely long still. It takes a, you know, you have to get to level 12 before you get to level 3 on a being a bro. So that's cooldown, being off cooldown is a huge deal. And these hissy fits are just oh my God. oppressive. Benny consistently on point. I mean... When you get under the towers of, it feels like Taiwan owns the wild card team side that owns their towers. It's like, no, those aren't your towers; they're my towers. We use them to kill your members oh. with the snare. Exactly. <sighs>
There's the push again. MG may have overcommitted this time. Star is able to pick up the kill. Nicely done by MG to make it as close as it is, his, though. But at the end of the day, that's five flares versus two who are Lin and Eleven. Need to play this so carefully. Their first high ground is down. I don't think there's the HP bars over on the Chinese Taipei side to fully take the game. Just lots of circles on the ground, TJ. <laughs> between the Lindis, between the Alice and her hissy fit and the sunshine, and the Arum and her uncaged, just lots of circles on the ground. And like I was mentioning earlier, they just own the wildcard team's own towers. They're just like, we're just going to dive your tower, and you can't get near us even though you're, it's your own tower. Yeah, it, it's been so beautiful to watch these coordinated team fights, like you're saying, from the Chinese Taipei side. And this is what we were looking for in game one, a very coordinated team. Yeah, absolutely. And we saw some of that coordination from the last time from the Wildcore team, especially with the team play and the teamy. But teamy's not doing quite as well this game, especially when they're forcing out being a pro every other second, every time mm -hmm. it comes off cooldown. Here's another opportunity to do so. Super minions reaching the bottom lane. Star will be pressuring into the teamy in the meantime, just trying to find value. <laughs> Wins has the snare deployed. No follow-up, but MG's very low. Half HP in the hissy fit. NT will be in trouble as well. That entrapment deployed for an effort Ooh. on the tower. Huolin will back off, but there's no HP left on several of his allies. There's being a pro deployed. Nobody caught in it. But so many effective kills and ultimates forced out. Now the effort can come through in earnest. Here's the high ground threatened in the top lane. Yuzon will hard commit in. Sure he dies, but the tower should fall in the meantime. And it does. And Yuzon takes one with him before he goes down. MG in the meantime just needs to weave his way back. But the Thunderbird is having none of it. Star picks up another kill. And there are only three players remaining to hold the tower. Oh, make Get that two! Final yeah, well, yeah, well, they got the kill as well. I was, gonna, I was looking at the tower that they're taking down, so only two members remaining, and four members on the core with all lanes open. This just could be it right now. It looks like it's going to be. Who all then needs to do something spectacular, and he cannot. <laughs> Game number two ties up the series at one all. The BM from the Taiwan team, from J-Team, just throwing the hissy fit into the fountain there, just to rub it in their faces. The coordination there was amazing, and it's funny how they were able to coordinate abilities that just came out recently. I mean, the Arum obviously came out in North America and, and Europe recently, you know, just last week. Only three weeks before that, it came out in Taiwan, so to be able to coordinate things like using snare into hissy fit to completely zone out the opposing team is just so impressive and so impossible to deal with because once you get out of the snare you're running into a freaking hissy fit that is empowered by frosty's revenge and you're not really having a good time and that was just so ridiculously well done by taiwan i loved every moment of watching that game and that means we're going to a game three as well which excites me more than anything Look at that. 14, 14, 14. The Lindis, Tulin, and Alice were so good in that game. And not to mention wins on that Arum. Just come just basically playing support. Which Look you know at, there's yeah, many ways. Percentage to play of the damage Arum. Taken. Just getting in there and being annoying. Like mm -hmm. snare. Snare. You know, uncaged, throwing out my my lions at you and just never able to do anything it's a, a bit of a different way to play arum i would say you know typically when you see arum in solo queue you're using your ravenous beast you typically have you know all three beasts around you at all times and you're just healing on the opposing team and just being annoying and being immortal but winds just kind of use it as another ranged character you get in there they're under the tower and you just throw out your uncaged and they can't do anything about these massive circles on the ground that can't go near. And if they do, they get snared and die. So interesting to basically turn Arum into another ranged, basically DPS, as slash support in this game. Absolutely. It's been really, really weird to see that happen. We've got ourselves... An interesting series, though, because game number one was so dominant in team fights towards the wildcard team. Game number two makes it 
interesting again. I think the drafting was super interesting as well, because you saw in game one that I thought that Taiwan had the better draft, but as it turns out, the wildcard had a strategy to completely shut down the Arum and the Superman. And it worked out in their favor in the end, finally, when Team E was able to get those resurrects. But it was a pretty close game throughout. Then, second game draft, the surprise Lindus Alice at the very end, and wildcard's like, oh... Oh, that's bad for us. <laughs> yeah. And the kind of the, you the could panic tell. max pick. You could yeah. tell the second that Alice came through, they were thinking for a while. And to be fair, the max was a reasonable counter pick. Not really a counter pick, but it's as best as you could do. Response but... pick. Right. But you could tell that they really didn't know what to do with him. They're like, in theory, this goes well, but we haven't practiced this comp a thousand times before. At least, you know, not as much as you've seen Lindus and Alice squared together, so... Yeah, I mean, yeah. you're always going to have that advantage, especially if you're playing a team that is a wildcard team, that isn't used to playing together. J-Team has the advantage of playing as a unit for an entire regular season. That's why they're the primary team. That's why they're a Chinese Taipei. The wildcard roster has a ways to go to try and match that. And by the way... For the seedings, obviously you want to win, <laughs> not just for the two points, yeah. but but for bragging rights. But every game matters. So both of these teams pick up yet another point, and it doesn't make any difference as far as you know the comparison with each other. Obviously, only that means only one team gets a one point advantage at, at the end of this. But it does separate themselves from teams in the middle. Speaking of like Korea or the Thailand wildcard, Vietnam, Europe, those are your five through eight teams at the moment. Not really going to even talk about North America, South America, <laughs> Indonesia, and no. MSB because they cannot, they cannot uh, catch up basically to these two teams. But, you know, every point that you get separates yourself more, gives you better seeding into the single elimination tournament. Yeah, it should be really <laughs> fun. For now, though... I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and call call a break. Like a Need rap break. You know? When you're in the middle <laughs> yes. of the song and then some guy just starts rapping. It's called a rap break. And Daniel Enjoyed. is our rapper. No 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 no, that's not happening. I'm sorry. Those were not sick bars. We'll be right back after this with game number three between Taipei and Taipei's wildcard team. Don't go far.
gentlemen and ladies do that backwards to fake people out. We're back. It's the unofficial broadcast of the AWC Boot Camp. It's spectacular. My name's still TJ, still joined by D2. We are into game. It's game number three between both Taiwan teams. Chinese Taipei's official team over on the right took game number two, the first uh, official, I suppose is the wrong word. The first game went to the wild card roster for the same region. Yep, and it looks like our suspicions were true in that the loser, the blue team, starting in the bottom left, and so that means the wild card team starts with the first ban. They ban out our room, which is pretty interesting. Do you think? That is a response to how strong Aro has been, or do you think that it has to do more with their band pick position? I didn't see anything, chat. Sorry. Yes, I think it's directly in response to how strong Aro has been. This wildcard team has suffered at the hands of an Aro twice now. Yeah, even in the game that they won, it was pretty impressive. Just. So many circles in the gun, TJ. Not to mention the snare. Yeah. And, and... I wouldn't be surprised at all if Arum was now one of the bands because she's that strong. And you can see because there was a focus on banning her, a different character got through. Timmy is now on the board. Wonder Woman is now on the board. Max is now on the board. You don't always see those characters make it through a banning phase. Malak is actually another character who's been banned throughout every single game today. So, another character who gets through to the pick phase. And that's the first pick. Malak actually very similar to Aram in that he just kind of never dies. <laughs> just like, you, you know, and the more heroes around him, the more he can heal up with cleave and blunder and, and uh, soul leader for that matter. Seeing uh, Malak lab six soul leaders is like a religious experience. They land the soul leader and just gather up like 18 people and 18 million shield. It's insane. That is not a sound effect I would like you to ever make again. Thanks. I never turned off the music, by the way. So oh, we've been great. in a Western adventure for the last like two minutes. The rest We're of the draft does sorry. continue. Two mages coming through, presumably Jungle Tulin to back up the mid lane Liliana, but a double mage is something <laughs> exciting, to say the least. Yeah, I really like to see this, especially because, speaking of the Valor series, this is what we wanted to see from Immortals. Mm. Remember when we were when they were playing against Dino Riders, they kept letting Immortals the Liliana problem, through. Immortals problem versus Dino Riders was not that they weren't trying enough new stuff. That was not their problem. <laughs> but they should have tried this specific I thing and not let it I disagree. Get the lily I don't really like Jungle Tulum. But <laughs> I'm always open to being proven wrong, and these are some of the best players in the video game. So if anyone is going to prove me wrong, I should think it would be them. By the way, interesting to see in this particular meta, we've gone back to a three mage kind of merry-go-round, right? It's Flash, it's Tulin, it's Liliana, and L'Oreal has fallen out of favor. Uh, L'Oreal just, I don't think, has the mobility these days because she's so ult-based. She, it reminds right. me a lot of Crashed, actually. Like, one-to-one -one Crashed. Crashed got so powerful uh, during the early phase, but then people learned how to play around the ultimate, and now we don't see Crashed very much in competitive play. Right. I think it's very similar. L'Oreal was very powerful during the early phase of EUNA play, and then people learned how to play around the ultimate, which is a huge part of what L'Oreal does. And <laughs> They ran away from it, so right? It. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, those are all, let's just not Remember those there. clips during, like, weeks one through <laughs> three of the Valor series of people just taking team fights inside the smite? 80s here, one before. Yeah. <laughs> just stop fighting them in the glowy circle, for the love of God. <laughs> It's not that complicated. Uh, we have some new picks here, going with the Zephyrs, who we haven't seen either picked or banned this entire time, despite being extremely strong. 
but uh, goes to the Taiwan side. We pick him up here, and on the side of Wildcard, we have the Tara, aka Discount Arum. Let's see. Wow. <laughs> Rude. Tara, <laughs> I, I think, it. does fall in much the same category, a ton of survivability. Praetor will come through as the more static mage. They don't see a whole bunch of dive opposing them, so they go for it. This leaves a Violet up to oppose the Lindis, though. Yuzon running that. No, Neil running that for the uh, Chinese Taipei side. Yeah, I think that this is a response to no max taken. So they are free to play with Marksman. Marksman on both sides this game. So pretty interesting. No RO, no max this game. Uh, two characters that shut down the back line and the front line, respectively. And uh, I'll be interested to see how effective the Preta is, because they have a lot of dive characters, and I suppose the idea is that he just going to be raining down damage from the back while his team takes up the damage from the front, right? They He just kind of sits <laughs> unnoticed, and then this big wall of damage comes through, and they don't really have the dive, speaking of Taiwan, the J-team, to get on top of him. No. Um, I, I think that a lot of the official roster's strength right now comes from having a good, solid frontline duo. And late game? Violet Liliana Tulin? Would you like damage? <laughs> it's kind of a lot of damage, yeah. Yeah, that will delete literally anything that looks their way too long. I wonder who they're going to focus. I, I mean, I obviously assume that they're going to focus on getting Violet up as quickly as possible rather than the Tulin, but uh, we'll see what the priority is. I say both teams pressing toward the middle. Both teams pressuring, yes, but neither fully committing. Benny will take a fight hard versus 11 down bottom. He needs to try and hold the mic goal. He's got Zan Yu, though, here as well to do it. That entrapment will pick up the kill. Benny... Oh no, Benny stole it. Benny got the golem. I'm not even sure how. I thought the entrapment got it for sure. Yeah, sorry, I didn't catch that either. I was looking at wins. A lot of damage from Linda's ability and the um, I feel like, oh, and the cleave from Eleven as well. So I was looking at that and thinking, oh, they got to get out of here. But uh, somehow, I guess uh, Benny was able to take that. Typically, he just can steal it with his booty boots. There's a lot of damage. Surprisingly so for support, so I would imagine that was what happened. So, we're wondering as to the placement of this Tulin. It's not a jungle <coughs> Tulin, it's a bot lane Tulin. The Violet is in jungle. Yeah, so with that punish, he will be able to take all of the seagulls in the bottom lane there, and kind of have that control over the... Um, all of the monsters, basically objective control, and he is in that abyssal lane, so that will be certainly helpful when a fight breaks out around there, inevitably. Double mage, one marksman, though, that's a lot of squishies. Early game ganks, particularly before the marksman and mages have all of their utility up, will be a threat. And that does appear to be what's being set up towards the bot lane. Right, and oh, we have a little bit of skirmish here between, it looks like, Timmy and Alice. I guess no one's going to die from that thing. But, uh, yeah, I think that's the reason why the wildcard team went for the Zephyr, because the Luba wasn't available to really dive on the back of them. Yeah, damage coming out from there. But, um, oh, can Benny steal it once more? Oh, he did! Does? Benny steals the golem <laughs> again! With an auto-attack! With his auto-attack, the Pooty Poots was too early. He still finds the value. This Abyssal Dragon will be next on the chopping block for the official Chinese Taipei roster. But it's being contested. The Wildcard wow. team will come through. Star will go down first. This wow. Abyssal Dragon should be next. They've kited it successfully outside. Oh, Wind steals it. Wind comes in for the side. There's two as well. The Thunderclaps claim them. Benny gets chunked by the Plague Spectre, but he's successfully able to disengage and what? go back in with a flicker. What? Pooty Boots combo barely staying ahead of the cleave. That is insane. Unbelievable play from both sides. First, Hualin, I just... 
pog champed all over the place over this prey to play just double bomb throwing players all over the place able to pick up that kill and just completely zoning out the members of taiwan they're still able to get the abyssal like you mentioned and then betty on the backside the flicker in the kill and he gets out amazingly just completely ridiculous play for both sides absolutely insane and they're trying for more here on the official Taipei side. They want to be able to pick up this top lane, and I think they can. The Zephyrs surrounded by AoE from the Liliana, chained in place by the Whirlwind from Yuzon. Yeah, Zephyrs does get more resilient as he gets lower in health, but um, wasn't resilient quite enough. But Hualin is in trouble. Oh my god, that's a lot of trouble. He tries to get the Plague Spectre out, and you can see just how little damage it does. This starts to look very good for the official Chinese Taipei roster. Neil yes, will chip away sudden... at the tower itself. But they've got complete control, top lane as well. Yeah, just completely bowling them out. I mean, 3k, well, nearly a 4k lead here on the side of Taiwan. Just, I mean... I don't even know how they opened up the lead that quickly. It didn't seem like it was that one-sided, but, you know, taking a Vistle Dragon, it looks like Winston's in trouble here, though. In shock. We'll be able to get out, out very narrowly and just pop the recall right then and there. Why not? No fear of the man. The rest of his team's coming through. He'll hang around for the minion wave clear. The Abyssal Dragon is up at this time, so the fact that Wins didn't go down is important, but he has to recall nonetheless. Regardless, the wildcard team isn't looking to punish. Yeah, exactly. They don't really have the gold, honestly, to even contest the Abyssal Dragon. And I like this decision from the wildcard team. They're saying, we don't really want to force anything. We'll take what's ours and kind of get out. Bas a lot of times you see teams get desperate and say, oh, we need to take the Abyssal Dragon. We need to get it back. We know that oh, we're going back as Fallen under his own tower. Benny, oh, that was insane. He'll go down here, but I think the Resurrect was active. It was. Now Death from Above comes through. MG trying to find the trade will succeed. Narrowly. And by the way, just notice that he picked execute. He didn't even go for the punish. So not going for the typical jungle Zephyrus, but going for kind of lane Zephyrus and execute works out perfectly well right there. But, you know, like we're mentioning earlier, wildcard team is playing this extremely well playing from behind. They're not, they're only taking what they can reasonably get. They're not, you know, getting desperate they're not trying to go for things that they can't pick up they're not trying to go for the abyssal dragon just because it's there and taiwan's going back they're taking what they're what's theirs they're not letting you know taiwan just extend their lead they're saying okay we're gonna try to just hold on bed not break and don't do anything reckless chinese taipei will pick up the abyssal and they're looking for more Look at this, Leviathan on Tulin. Ooh. Use on as well, tag down. Sorry. Leviathan on Tulin is a very interesting note indeed. That'll make him more tanky, and that's good because they're diving in with him at this exact moment. Oh my oh. lord, that damage, but he eye frames the Thunderbird using his shock <laughs> to escape the homing projectile and survive with his life. That was insanity. I don't think I've ever seen a Shuck allow someone to escape a Thunderbird oh. before, but he goes in with the kills, Benny! Benny says, it doesn't matter. You can get so fancy, so clever. I don't care. All right, but some uh, some value picked up here from MG, trying to push in on the top end. Use on just pushes them away. Interesting, they're using Zephyrus in this match. You typically don't see Zephyrus as the side laner, but getting um, good use out of him. Especially I don't see of his Zephyrus result. as the side laner either. I see him in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Barely able to get out. Well, that, I mean, that's why he's pretty good in that role, theoretically. Because he's just so resilient, doesn't really have you know healing to his name, but it's impossible to kill because, like his passive says, the lower he gets, the more resilient he is. And you know, down five wins in trouble from him, but him and Benny have the push, those thunderclaps doing an insane amount of damage. It's a good dash through the bush to evade Benny's chain lance and the hissy fit as well, just to slow down the pursuit. Now they get cheeky, the entrapment will do damage, both of them. Benny's being chucked very low, but he's got the resurrect. He will be back. In the meantime, the pressure is coming through. Star joins the fray, there's the shock in, but it's too little, too late today. 
as Taipei clean up yet another fight. Bit of a misjudgment there from Hualin as get low as well. But Hualin misjudging the situation. He goes for the aggressive rotation around the top side of that barrier instead of going through with his team. And he gets caught out on the side of Taiwan, just trying to take any advantage that they can, trying to come back into this game. But unfortunately, the, for the first time since they got down, speaking of the wildcard team, they make a mistake and allow Taiwan to extend their lead. Benny and the star have the push in the bot lane. This is going to oh, be look a at this. hard I, tower I, to take. I just, look at the double mana rings, the mana regeneration from Seth is realizing that he's not going to be able to take those Sage Golds. That is an interesting adaptment. Or like adaptation, said, excuse me. These Asian teams seem way more aware of what their items do to their build and much more deliberate with it than many of the Western sides. Yeah, that is... That is so nice to see. It's just, it makes so much sense when you think about it. It's like, well, you know when after the fact something is genius that... Uh, They're having the shower thoughts? In the, yeah, they're exactly. just playing in the shower. Oh my god. <laughs> Waterproof phones. Just nice cover. With the new sure you iPhone the... X, you can play in the shower. <laughs> Star <laughs> will take the lead alongside Benny. They've got pressure in the mid lane. But more importantly, what? they're cutting off the wave to the top. Right. One minute, over one minute remaining on the Dark Slayer buff. The 10k gold lead. There's going to be at least one high gun tower taken down. But uh, let's see how many wild cards can hold on to. Maybe not any. The bot lane already due to fall. Good hissy fit. We'll stall out the take, actually. Neil can still pick it up in a moment if he just lingers to- OH MY <laughs> GOD! What is that damage? <laughs> Hua Lin barely survives. That tower will fall. Benny successfully has his Being a Pro Resurrection baited out, but now the pressure comes through onto the mid tower, and that high ground as well will fall. MG with the hard dive cannot get anything, and the rest of the wild card roster just needs to reset, try and stay alive. You mentioned at the start of this, Liliana, Tulin, oh. Violets, as Shanyo yes. goes down. That's it, so exactly that. So much damage. What can you so do much against look at this. that much damage? Not much. There are no high grounds remaining. And this core is vanishing. Two-thirds gone in an instant. There's the shock coming through. An attempt at a response from Eleven, but he's slain quickly. Thankfully, it slows down the minion wave. Perhaps it's enough. The wild card roster do have enough to to hold their base, to stand in it uncontested for a moment. So nine towers to zero, 13k gold lead. I would say that this, all, this is all but in the bag here for Taiwan. While we have a little bit of time, this game probably inevitably ends. I want to talk about the soaring aura here from the Tulip because he has basically picked up a very resilient build. He gets a lot of health and armor from the Leviathan. He gets the magic lifesteal and the huge shield from the Reyes Blessing, and he gets a lot of HP from the Soaring Aura as well, but what Soaring Aura does is gives you the most raw magic pierce in the game at 150, and that really allows Liliana to get that damage in, not to mention the Teamy as well, so that they really adds to the damage. They can't hurt him. And... <laughs> They're trying so hard to hurt them, and they cannot. There's such uh... a gold lead in hand. Benny eating their damage like it's a breakfast Ooh. cereal and Neil is eating their HP. Here's the push for game. Whirlwind taking the lead and the official Taipei roster takes game number three. So well played there from the official Taiwan team, from J Team, who was the champions of Taiwan. And uh, wow, we're very well played, like we mentioned. And such an interesting draft. They go for Liliana and Tulin right off the bat. Go for the Violet as well. Just you would think it's so flimsy and also so reliant on all of their members getting to that point where they're farmed up. But they say, you know what? We're going to stick Tulin in the Abyssal lane by himself, that solo lane, get in Leviathan so he can be one of the frontliners. Strangely enough, getting there, be a brawler, be a fighter, and just insane innovation. And it works out perfectly. It was very fun to watch. Do you have any idea what our next matchup's going to be? 
Our next match, unfortunately, is not going to be happening. Oh, no. uh, I think we're, I think we're done for today. I thought that, I thought there was four on the docket. There were, but the next match is not until seven p.m. Oh, Taiwan time. Right, and that it'll be broadcast in English at that time by the official Garena channel for the Philippines. And yes, I don't want to step on those toes. They have big toes. Right. I think it's rock art casting. That man looks like he has some big toes, if you know what I mean. Yeah, so TJ and I were talking about this. TJ doesn't. TJ is 100% not casting later because he has moral qualms. If the cast, if the Taiwan cast and the English cast are different, I might go ahead and do it. If they are the same, then I will not do it because that would just be a dick move. Um, but if you are interested, if you want to go watch, go on to YouTube and type in Arena of Valor, search for the, the Malaysia, Singapore, Philippines channel. Uh, if you want to search for all the different channels to see what games are broadcasting, I would suggest going or looking for the, uh, Taiwan Arena of Valor. And, uh, let me just put in the chat the, um, so the bracket is there. And if you copy the characters that are in that website, then it'll, and into YouTube, it'll bring you directly to Rina Valor Taiwan website. And that's where they'll have this particular stream. So you can check out what's going on. But on the Taiwan stream is going to be Taiwan versus China to the top teams on the standings and a grudge match that so we're not going to go into politics here. And after that, going to be the wild card Taiwan team versus the Thailand team, who we saw was dominant earlier today, and they are in the first seed. So definitely, if you don't see us uh, cast that, then certainly catch that on the uh, Taiwan YouTube channel, because those are spicy matchups. That's yep. going to be three hours from now. A three-hour break, apparently. And of course, after the break, there will be another English stream up, so... I don't feel right commentating from that point on, because Garena are producing a product targeted at you, personally. I'm probably... I don't know, I'm, I'm like feeling energized now, that match was sick. Depending on how I feel, I might actually go stream on my personal channel, which is like a terrible <laughs> idea, Daniel. Um, and just like, well... stream me playing the video game. Late night TJ is best TJ. <laughs> Late night TJ crazy. is when I'm gonna like say something stupid. Like it, it's a terrible well, idea. It's already too late. That's already happened. <laughs> already... Have I said stupid things today? <laughs> it's he didn't even realize. He's not even self-aware. No, just... definitely. I <laughs> borderline not sentient. I... <laughs> <laughs> That's stupid. Thank you so much for watching. You can find me, of course, on the internet at esports tj. Daniel is at d two h s everywhere for now. Thanks for watching, and good goodbye.